First story. Co-worker went nuts after I refused to be the man of honor at her wedding because she doesn't have any gay friends to claim as her playtoy, dehumanizing me, and got herself suspended. This happened yesterday, and I'm still confused. Yesterday was my first day back to work after being off for two weeks. This is kind of important. One of my co-workers got engaged the week before I left. When she announced at work, we all did the congratulations and happy for her type of things. I thought it was over. So when I left for vacation the last time, I knew no plans had yet been made. Then yesterday, when I went back to work, my boss K and best friend L said that co-worker C was looking for me. I asked what was up, and they weren't sure, but she was carrying a little gift bag. A few minutes later, C found me and asked how my vacation was. I was telling them about it, and she cut me off and said she had a very important question to ask. She handed me a little gift bag and asked if I would be her best man of honor for her wedding. I thanked her and told her that typically this would traditionally go to a close female relationship. She responded that there was nothing traditional about her wedding, so it was good. I looked over at Ellen Kay, who were both trying to keep from laughing. I again thanked her, congratulated her, and told her that I wasn't interested in being part of her wedding party, and that I would be happier being a guest in the audience. I swear when I said this, it was when we watched her entire demeanor change and a switch flipped. She went off, saying that I have to be at her wedding, and that she doesn't understand why I would say no. I told her that we only knew each other for a short time, and that I had no interest in trying to plan parties, dinners, and shopping trips. She told me I needed to think about it, and she would get back to me later. I told her to go for it, but my answer will be the same. She walked away, and I looked at Kay and L and asked what the ever-loving fresh creepy hell was that. Kay started to laugh and said she didn't know. But saying no like I did might have saved me a lot of headaches in the future. L made the comment that she went straight to Bridezilla, and this was a look into what she was going to be like. C came back today. However, she went with a different approach and handed me a list of what she wants me to do and her vision of how she sees things. I asked her why she gave me this, and she said that as her man of honor, these were my responsibilities. I told her again that I was not going to do any of this. She started again that she needs me to do this and how much fun it was going to be. Then she asked, haven't you ever wanted to be part of something special? I told her I was. I was a nurse. Enter K who could sense that I needed help, and told C one of her patients needed her help. I told K that if this keeps up, I might need her help. She said she was already watching it, and would intervene if I needed it. What did I miss? We aren't that close. She just transferred down to my unit from a different unit six months ago. I had no idea who she was until that point. Elle is saying that she is close in age to me, and she might feel that to be enough of a connection. Did I miss something? When we are asked, are we supposed to automatically gush and jump up and down in excitement? Why is saying no a bad thing? Comments Mrs. Pucasso 69 It sounds like she has no one else in her life, and you being around her age and nice to her was enough to give you the honor. Stay firm and don't give in. Also, from your post history, I assume correct me if I'm wrong you're a gay man. Could she be putting a lot of weird stereotypes into play and trying to make you her gay best friend and wedding planner? The underscore show underscore must underscore go underscore on. This was exactly what my mind went to. She wants to be cool by having a gay best friend. Update. One day later. Hey everyone. First, I apologize. I never thought this was going to go as crazy as it did. I want all of you to know I read all of your responses and responded to as many as I was able to. Thank you all for your amazing insights and comments. Many that made me laugh. Which I needed. I have been sick and that really helped to cheer me up. I had to meet with my lawyer today regarding family issues. My neighbor or best friend or co-worker L took me. I really felt awful, and driving wasn't a good idea. We were talking about this on the way, and we both were asking a lot of the same questions that all of you were asking. The big one was that we were asking about the circumstances of her transfer. She went from med surge 4W to the ER. That is a huge change. I have to work tomorrow, so we will see what happens. But L and I are going to ask Kay about the transfer and raise a couple of other concerns. After I got home from the meeting with my lawyer, I slept for the rest of the day. Many of you asked about if C and I hang out outside of work. The answer is no. I really don't know anything about her. I have helped her a few times with patients and different things. But our relationship is 100% purely work-related. That was why I was so surprised that she asked me to do this. That is why I was so surprised that she asked me about being the man of honor. 
I have a very small friend base. And in all honesty, I like to keep it that way. I really have no interest in being a part of this. I'm not a wedding person. After reading so many Bridezilla stories and hearing about over-the-top weddings, they have become a huge turnoff to me, spending tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars with insane unrealistic demands that turn people against each other. Why? I would rather use that money and spend that time planning my next trip or vacation. Many people said that I was being used as a token or prop in a wedding. Or a gay best friend. I never really thought about it. I admit that I'm out and proud. But I'm not going to just pretend to be someone's friend just so they can fulfill some kind of fetish they have for wanting to have a gay best friend or some kind of status she feels the need to fulfill. It takes me a lot to get offended. But if this were actually the case, then I would really be rather offended. I was not put on the face of the earth to be someone's play toy. A lot of people have said that maybe she doesn't have a boyfriend. She does. She has brought him in before. If she has any insecurity, I don't understand it. She is attractive, smart, and knows the stuff. So I'm at a loss as to why she is acting like this. A lot of people say go to HR. I'm starting that process with my boss Kay. She is completely aware of the situation being with us when all this happens. She has told me that she is watching the situation and will jump in if I need her to. I trust her completely. While Kay and HR can control the situation from the hospital, they can't control the situation from a personal level, if she were to maybe follow me home or a situation like that. So I think that covers it all. I wish I could say this is over. But most likely, there is more to come. Set your update, me. Comments. Scout Bandit. I really hope you can figure out what she thinks she's trying to do and escape the situation unscathed. From the way you said she acted, this may be a thing where one of you has to leave the department you work for. I hope it doesn't come to that. I don't blame you for not wanting to be around people and their wedding BS. I feel the same way. And it seems like, in America at least, people are getting worse and worse. Best of luck to you. And I can't wait to see your next update. Silent underscore coffee underscore 7292. I wonder if all her friends said no. Or if she doesn't have as many as she says. Or. Her fiancé has a best woman. And she feels threatened by that. OP, I love your possibilities. Update. Two days later. I keep forgetting to thank my boyfriend. He has been with me on this, but more in the background. First, when we were laughing about it. But when everything Thursday happened, he was there as well. L was able to get him away from his unit for a little bit, so it will be okay. Boyfriend hug. He stayed the night with me a couple of nights as well, also helping with me being sick. So yeah, I'm very lucky to have such great support. This intro is going to be long, but I'm telling you about this for a reason. And later in this update, it will make sense. I'm hoping this will be done, and that this will be the last of this whole situation. I was born into a family where I was referred to as an issue that needed to be dealt with. I lived in the shadow of my sister, who was the child my parents wanted. They wanted one child, which was a girl. That way, dad had his daddy girl, and mom had mommy little princess. Then I came along. Keep in mind that I'm 23 so back, then my parents had options, but chose to not use any of those options. So instead, my parents raised my sister, and I was raised by a nanny, who even to this day is one of the biggest influences in my life, and I am so grateful for her. She helped me with so much. I finally realized that all these years later, by being referred to as an issue that needed to be dealt with, they stripped me of my humanity, individuality, and self-worth as a person. I think that's why I have worked so hard to establish myself in my career and in my life. As a way to become a person again, and not just be that issue that needed to be dealt with. This past Thursday things came to a head with the bridezilla known as C, and the truth came out. My best friend L has been sticking close to me when we worked together if C was to start something. We weren't sure if she was going to leave it alone or start up again. I was really hoping that it was done. But she had to try once again. I've been sick and I had a busy morning. So I really just wanted a few minutes to go to the bathroom, grab a quick snack, and maybe breathe. C came up, and had her list, and asked if I had a few minutes to talk about the wedding planning. I looked at her, and told her again that I was not interested in being part of her wedding, and that I was not going to help in any way, and she needed to drop the subject and leave me alone. Again, she went into the why of how I was going to do this, and how much fun it was going to be. Here we go with that line all of you loved the first time. Why in the ever-loving, fresh, creepy hell is it so important for me to be your man of honor? I'm not interested, and I'm not doing it. It is as exactly as pretty much all of you told me it would be. She was just planning on using me as a token or a play toy. 
She took all of the f ed up gay stereotypes that are out in society and put them into one sentence. What modern liberal woman isn't going to have a gay bestie on her arm for special events? I felt everything in my stomach move, and a wave of nausea came over me, and I felt like I couldn't get to the bathroom fast enough. This pissed Elle off to no end. Elle is really kind of like the overprotective sister that I wish I would have had and took C off to visit our boss K and laid it all out. Everything that was said. While I wasn't in on that conversation, Elle and K filled me in on what was said. K came to check on me, and I was still hiding in the bathroom. She knocked on the door and asked if she could come in. I asked her for a bottle of water first. While I was waiting, I realized two things. I realized why I chose not to hang out with her and why I didn't like her. I couldn't figure out why I didn't like her, just that there was something that gave me the headaches. But I realized that I didn't like her because she is a different version of my sister. While C is educated and employed, she doesn't care about other people and their feelings. She is like my sister in the sense that if she wants something bad enough, she will figure out how to get it. The second thing I realized was that she did exactly what my parents did to me. She completely dehumanized me and reduced me to an entity. Just kind of turned me into a token or a thing for her. I think the word that best describes it is I must a play toy. What really gets me is that, just like my sister C doesn't think she did anything wrong, I'm being too sensitive and a delicate snowflake. The next day an emergency meeting was held at work, and C is being suspended pending investigation and a new transfer is being looked into. K made the request for her to be terminated. The director of emergency nursing said this was a last resort, but she was going to be looking into options, which could be sending her to a new hospital or facility. This didn't go over well with me. I asked what would happen if she did the exact same thing to someone different. She didn't really give me an answer, but she said she still needs to look into a few things, and at this point, she is suspended. Anyway, here it is. I'm still pretty sick and had to work this weekend. If I can, I'll respond. I want to thank everyone for all the amazing support. I am going back to my lawyer to see if he can figure out how to send her a cease and desist letter to make sure she doesn't contact me. I'm heading to bed. Have a good night. Comments. Sishu29. I'm glad to hear that your supervisors heard you and are planning to take measures. IMO. I just don't think moving her is enough. Avanorak. She's been moved before. So I doubt this is an isolated incident of treating co-workers poorly. Second story. Mom had an affair 18 years ago. I 18M am the product of it. My dad just informed me of all this and told me he would not pay for my college, while my siblings got their college experience paid for by our dad. Pretty much the title. I have no idea how to process all this, and I am completely unprepared for what lies ahead. Both my older brother and sister went to the same college. My brother graduated two years ago, and my sister is set to graduate in two years. Both had their college paid by our dad. Dad paid all their college expenses, including rent, food, their cars, pocket money, you name it. My brother has a job now, his own place, lives together with his fiancée, and has his life together. My sister already has a good-paying job, and my dad still pays for almost everything for her. I got accepted to the same college, which was always the plan and was looking forward to talking with my parents about the next steps and asking them to help me the same they did for my siblings. I always assumed they had money put aside for my college the way they had for my siblings. Instead, I was met with a story about my mom's cheating, how I am the result of her cheating, and how my dad is not willing to support me anymore moving forward. Dad told me that mom had 18 years to let me know and prepare me for the future, but obviously she never did. He said it was never the place to say anything since I am not his son, and didn't want to interfere with mom's parenting. Apparently my grandparents know I am not dad's biological son, but they haven't bothered to tell me anything either. My siblings had no idea, and they are as surprised as I am because there was never a hint of anything being off. I might be naive, but I always thought I had a great relationship with my dad. We go to see sports together. We go fishing together. He tutored me when I had difficulties with math. Dad is an engineer. He taught me to drive. I never got a hint he stores resentment towards me. I mean, he gave me my name and has explained what my name means, and he was very proud of it. It's a story he tells from time to time. He likes to talk about stuff like that about me. My mom has never said a word about anything, and apparently she was supposed to have the talk with me, but she never did. I feel abandoned and unprepared for what lies ahead. I am not even sure I will be able to go to college anymore. I always assumed my parents would pay for it. I never had a job, and I am not sure what job I can even get to support me through college. 
I have no idea how to apply for loans. All my mom has done is cry and apologize. But nothing of substance. She has no idea how to help me. I don't even know if I am welcomed home anymore. It's all up in the air. I feel shame leaving my room. And if I am asked to move out, I don't know where to go. I don't have any savings maybe $400 put together. I am angry at my mom. I am confused about where I stand with my dad. There's a man out there who is my father who never wanted to have anything to do with me. I feel rejected, and I have no idea what to do to fix this situation. Anyone have any idea what to do here? Do I apologize to my dad? What do I say to him? I don't know. I've been stuck in my room these past few days, reading and browsing Reddit. I have no idea what to do. Edit. Comments are coming in faster than I can reply. But I am making a list with all the advice about financial aid, health insurance, getting my own phone plan, etc. Things I didn't even think about before. Thank you everyone. I will try to answer as much as I can. But there's more comments than I can handle. Update. Sorry to disappear. Nothing bad happened to me. I managed to talk with my mom yesterday. But I chickened out halfway through what I had to say. The good news is that I am not being kicked out, disowned, etc. Thank you for all your support, everyone. I will follow through and call financial aid at my college in a few hours and take it from there. My grandpa had a stroke a week ago, and my dad is helping my grandma with setting up a live-in nurse, so he wasn't around yesterday. I will let you know how I manage. Thank you again. Update 2. Sorry for not updating. My grandpa passed away yesterday morning. Nothing happened to me, but my situation is a secondary concern right now. Regardless, I think I will be all right, thanks to your amazing support and help. My sister is aware of everything and told me not to worry. She has my back and I have her support. I promise to update when and if there are any significant changes. Right now I need to support my grandma. Thank you again to everyone. Update 3. Hey guys, and an update has already been posted. Please don't message me so angrily anymore. The reaction to my original post put an uncomfortable amount of pressure on me to write this update. I am not sure if it's what you want to hear, but things are more or less back to a normal state if you consider other events. Unfortunately, my grandpa died at the beginning of this week, and I am still processing it. I did manage to talk with both my mom and dad, and I know where I now stand in relation to them, as well as my siblings. I am not sure I would have had the courage to say what I had to say if not for the amount of help and advice in the comments. I think it is safe to say both my parents love me, and what happened two weeks ago was an overreaction to a fight between my parents. It makes me uncomfortable knowing I am not aware of my own environment. But a stranger in the comments can tell me what's happening in my life, with only a few lines of text from my side. A lot of comments were spot on about what is happening in my life. I have so far gone through 40% I estimate of the comments, but I have given up. There are too many for me to keep up with. The conclusion is that I am definitely going to college. It will be the college I have always wanted to go to, and I will have the same experience as my siblings. The money to pay for all this already exists. My family is not going bankrupt as suggested. My dad just had a mental breakup with all the issues around my grandpa and his fight with my mom. Even if my dad would have gone through with his decision. My grandma let me know my grandpa left me and my siblings a sum we will have to split between the three of us, but enough to put me through college. What started the entire scandal was poor timing on my part. My parents just had a fight, and then I showed up. Hey, pay for my college. My parents were talking about us, their children, and mom said something along the lines of, to think you wanted to split up when I came back pregnant, or something like that. I was not there. This is what she told me. I guess dad was talking about how proud he was of his children, and mom wanted to express her gratitude for dad raising me as his own, and dad took it as, the affair was the best decision I ever made, or something like that and their fight escalated from there. And mom told dad something like, what makes you think any of them are yours? Yeah, it went downhill from there fast. Shortly after that, my dumb face showed up. And here I am. Dad and mom have since made up. Mom is still a mess. And dad is not handling my grandpa's passing away too well either. I did talk with my siblings, and my sister raised a storm and wrote it here while blasting my parents on the phone. Ha <laughs> ha. My brother was calmer but made his feelings known in no uncertain terms as well once he got back home. My grandpa passing away sort of kept spirits calm, I guess, and shifted the focus to dealing with that. Reading the comments was a mind-opening experience. I felt unprepared for the world out there. 
Many have asked how I had no idea how to apply for loans or grants. Well, in my defense, when you go year after year after year, knowing you have nothing to worry about, that your college is as good as paid for already, you don't really have to worry about anything else. Of course I knew there are loans and other things students have to be aware of, but it didn't apply to me. I went from, I am going to college, can't wait, to, you're not my son, and I will not pay for your college, in less than 24 hours. Others have been prepared for this. At the very least they knew they had to get a loan, get a job, look for a place to live, and so on. For me, it was a sudden change in reality. Going through the comments, I managed to put together a list with various tips and tricks, such as what jobs are available for students, how to find a place to live, how to get a credit card, a bank account, a cell phone plan, and so on. Really good stuff that I think, even after the return to normal, will help me. My parents have been called more names than they go by, and that was uncomfortable to read, and I haven't even read all comments. I can't even imagine what else lies in the comments, waiting. Dad is very sorry, apologetic, about his reaction and behavior. I understand his reaction, but I still feel hurt by it. I understand he was not in the best place of mind, but I can't control my feelings either. We will be alright, and this hasn't irreparably damaged our relationship. Mom hasn't handled everything that well. But she is coming around, and she answered some more questions for me. When mom had an affair years ago and got pregnant with me, my parents started divorced. Mom moved in with the man she had the affair with, but after a few months that guy decided he wanted nothing to do with it. He kicked mom out, and she had nowhere to go. So my grandparents took her in, because she was still the mother of their nephew's grandkids. I am getting a lot of heat for this, mistake. But know that in my family's culture, grandparents call their grandkids nephews as well. Mom and dad got back together. After a lot of work, dad took me as his own, and that's my life since then. The man who is my natural father is not in the picture anymore. Dad didn't really know who he is, and mom hasn't heard or seen him ever since. He was fully aware mom was pregnant with his child. I guess he had more important things to do. But it doesn't sound like he was about to cure world hunger. She met him in a bar, not at a fundraiser. And I don't feel a need to know any more about who he is. I thought about the matter the last two weeks, since I've been aware of everything, and haven't really felt a desire to know who he is, where he is, if he is still alive, and if I have other siblings out there. I was suggested to go and buy a DNA kit from 23andMe. Maybe I can find him that way, but I think I will avoid doing this specifically, so I don't find him, or he finds me. As far as I care, I have a mom and dad and a brother and a sister, and that's my family. Moving forward, I do plan on getting a job and becoming more independent, but not in an attempt to distance myself from my family, but to feel like I would not be lost in the world if my family suddenly disappears. My mom admits I've been babied way more than my siblings and that they should have prepared me more for what's coming next. I did learn where I stand with my family, and it's safe to say that I am loved and I have options. I thought I was isolated, but my world is wider than I thought. Grandparents, siblings, my aunt, and my cousins all have my back. I think my parents are human, and they make mistakes, and even though this was not their greatest moment, I think I will look at everything as nothing more than a weak moment in an otherwise wonderful relationship. Thank you. Edit. In my family's cultural background, grandparents call their grandkids nephews as well. Stop calling me names. It was not a mistake, please. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.